Across the Park podcast is proud to be sponsored by Globe Gas and Heating. For the best kitchen and bathroom renovations, boiler servicing and repair, and central and underfloor heating in the Northwest, head over to globecentralheating.com and quote Across the Park for a free quote. Well, welcome to Across the Park podcast. Very, very special episode with myself, Ian Mills. It's going to be a positive episode. I'm talking to one of the most positive lads I've seen online in a real long time, doing great things. We're also, unfortunately, going to talk about Everton Football Club. He's a big blue, but you must have seen him. You must have even read the great Echo article. It is Ryan Still. Ryan, how are you doing, my friend? Thanks for coming on. I'm doing amazing. Thank you for inviting me. This is one of... My first ever few podcasts. I've only done a handful, and recently I thought, why not? Let's just go on them and talk some, um, talk whatever we feel like. That's it. Just, just when you're rich, remember us. All right, just remember across the park podcast. uk was one of the first ones that I did on. Look, the question I've, I've watched a couple of little bits and bobs you've done podcast wise, and the same repetitive questions do always come up. So I'm going to try and put a bit of a, a spin on it. Um, I like you, that. You've spoken on different podcasts about education wasn't really for you and you wanted to go into sort of different areas. When was this the idea? Because there must have been a different few... When you're sitting there thinking about what you do next, there must have been a few avenues. Why Twitch? Because Twitch was the first one, wasn't it? Twitch was the first one, but let's get straight to it. I was in the electrician trade, and I just knew it went for me. I was looking at my hands, and because I was doing Twitch whilst I was an apprentice electrician, I was like, this just ain't for me. I like entertaining. I like making people laugh. But I think it came from... <clears throat> Being in school, being character building, being in an all lad school, constantly like, ripping the back out of each other, just that's how it was. It was Della Shell. We used to rip the back out of each other, and I always loved making people laugh or making the first joke. I think it was key of my bringing up in school. And I was sitting there one day on site, it was freezing, my hands were like icicles, and I was, I was wiring something, and I was like, You're talking like. The SWA cable and I couldn't even carry it because my back would have snapped like big cable and I was sitting there looking at my hands freezing I was shivering I was like what's going on I, I nothing against the electricians because the fantastic job but I was like what's going on why, why I don't belong here I don't belong here this isn't my purpose and I just went for it and took the leap what, so Twitch was the was the gaming, wasn't it? So anyone who's not sure what, what Twitch is I think it's like a gaming sort of it, you're streaming okay. the game and showing your reactions aren't you? It's a gaming platform. You're literally just sitting there playing card, playing FIFA, and streaming your face or your audio or both. So, so were you doing that before you sort of pushed it into sort of you know in, into the public? Are you doing that anyway? I was doing that anyway every day. I used to do it with mates. I used to play yeah. games, good games. I just used to do it. I loved it. I loved the thought of people coming in, chatting, what's happening, and how are we whilst I'm playing a game with the lads. Yeah. I think what you're doing, I've I've seen some of your old twitches because I've done a bit of a bit of research on you. Even though you're that young, you can still be researched, Ryan. Trust me, I've done a little bit of research on the twitch. But what I've seen, like, I reached out to you on, on on our Twitter and said, "Look, I'm following you. It's positive. It's great what you're doing." And I asked you to come on. You've kindly come on. Um, what I think you're doing very, very, very well is you're sort of navigating through the platforms now, the social media platforms. I've seen some of your um your, your vlogs at Goodison Park. I think you short TikToks on Church Street. Are just unbelievable. So, how are we going from Twitch? How are we going to TikTok? How are we deciding that we're going into the city centre and, and filming? Where do all these things come from? These are good questions. You know, I'll be honest. <laughs> I am not a one man band. I am not a one man band. I am not a one. What what's it called? Like, I'm not a. I'm not a one trick circus. Yeah, yeah. I just realised to get the attention, I will focus on one area, then grow into everything else I've got. So I focused on the Twitch. I gained the attention. There was a an opportunity there. There was no Scouse creators. There was no energy. There was no love. There was no no offense to any creators at that time. But there was there was that gap in the market where high energy, loud, energetic, loving. Oh my yeah. God! Oh reaction to a game, and I stamped down on that and I put my foot on the pedal, and I was pumping out clips every day. Rocket League, different games, Twitch streaming, eight hours a day. Maybe even longer doing subathons going past 24 hours. Wow. I was putting my foot down and now I grew into that switch genre. 
I thought mm-hmm. now it's time to spread across the social media platforms because what about the, the oldies but goldies on Facebook? What about the larger platform on TikTok? What about the the people that had never seen me on Twitch on Instagram? Mm-hmm. There's everyone everywhere that's not on everything. Uh, some of the videos that I've seen, uh, and again, you, you, you're guilty of just assuming things that you, you pick your phone up for the first time and, and you see a video and you think, God, is he going to punch your kids or something? Because that's what you usually see. It's such negative things. So to come, and see, to come and see you on Twitter, and I think you were giving stuff out on church at Christmas. I, I think you've done great things in relation to raising money for certain things. And, and I watched a video, I think it was two weeks ago, on Valentine's Day, speaking to someone who'd been bereaved, and, and you were very, really, very really kind to it. And all these things is going out online, and it's going to have a massive effect. I think what you're doing is absolutely brilliant. We will come back into that at the end of the show. I do want to ask you a few things about... The mighty, but the not so mighty blues. Um, I'm nearly double your age. I'm 38 next month, so I've seen a lot of bad times. Oh, nice one, mate. There you go. Nice one for that. <laughs> <laughs> Scousers take care of Scousers. Eh? <laughs> Look, so I've, but I have. The point I'm getting to is I have seen little bits of success when I was younger. You must, you've seen nothing. So what's I've it? What is it? Just normal for you? This. I think my biggest success was seeing. Was win against Arsenal one nil top of the league <laughs> last, last few God. weeks ago. <laughs> Is it normal for me? Yeah, I <laughs> Liverpool mm. fans are gonna watch this and laugh at it, but it is what it is. I've grew up and ever have been beat. You know, my dad talks about the glory days of when he used to go away home every time, and no matter what, there'd be a fight for it and there'd be passion. But I still believe and have hope because of the stories my dad tells me. Yeah. Like, I believe me, that I mean, that's not going to lie to me. Someone who's, who, who was glorious and who was victory and winning can go back to them ways. It's just tweaks within the club. It's 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 something I've grew up on, but I still believe, like, we can. We can win every four. We can, we, we can, we can, we can win. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not, not possible. And do you know why? This is why I've started doing match day vlogs. Because I want to spread the positivity around the fan base. Because the more of us that are positive sends that energetic field towards the team of come on, come yeah. on over every game. Then match day vlogs. I've only done three, and three of them are performing amazingly. People are loving them. They're giving a perspective of a young lad who's probably never seen success as Everton. Mm. And it's brilliant. And that's one of my goals I want with Everton content. I want to get the whole fan base behind it and push towards the team a positive reaction. For the oldies, but goldies who get angry, I like yourself probably, you probably get angry at the way Everton play. You oh, see played when we were good, when we were victory every week, when we were winning. So let's get that attitude back, even if we are losing, and just push and push. And I can see the frustration, I really can. I can see why people are frustrated. It's people spend the weekly wages going away with the team and mm. you put a performance <laughs> like that in it. It does it. I do. I really understand it. I think you're looking at from my, my point of view when, when the owner came in, and I don't want to get this into like who's right, who's wrong, though, not with the fan base, because I know there's lots of things going on with the fans at the moment. But when the owner came in, everyone just thought this is it. Now Man City have had this, and that that's that's what they juggernaut it into. It's going to be us. The frustration for me is it's just got worse since he's came in, and, and I don't know what the reason for that is. I think there's probably four or five small reasons that together make everything that that's gone wrong. Going back to when you, when you were a younger Evertonian and you were still starting to go to the match and you were looking at what players you liked, give us some games and players from when you were a kid. That, that first thing comes to your mind now. First game, Louis Saha, 2-2 Chelsea. I think he edited it. And I was, I can't remember where I was sitting, but I was on, I'm sure I was on my dad's shoulders. Yeah. And me, I, my dad threw me on his shoulders. Louis Saha's edited it. I'm, it was against Chelsea. I'm pretty sure of it. I can remember as a kid also crying in the kitchen when we were versing Liverpool in the FA Cup semi-final. Oh, bad one. We got beat and I was crying in my kitchen and my mum was like, don't cry, it's football. And I was like, no, we got beat. <laughs> I'm not having it, no. And I was crying my eyes out because we got beat. They're like two games that stand out for me when I was a kid. It's horrible, isn't it? One of the, one of the memories stands out as Liverpool beating Everton. That's the most proper Everton thing I've heard. FA Cup semi-final, though. It was like... Yeah. Why? Why it's did you? Well, when happen. I'm a kid, yeah. When I'm a kid, I'm going back and because it's the first real time you're hurt as a football fan, and you go back to you know the emotion. Yeah. Football club is loving it. You love that club. Maybe it's because of all the fingers and people pointing at you, all the Liverpool fans that you work with and your, your mates with, they're all laughing at you. 
And other yeah. memory as a footballer, um, as a footballer, as a football fan, me and my dad went to Derby one time in Anfield, but we couldn't get tickets in the away end. So as Everton fans were sat in the Liverpool home end, <laughs> and we got beat 4-1. Oh, no. Oh, it is. It is. <laughs> Funny memories, though. It's what you can laugh at, because at the end of the day, it's laughable. Like, me and my dad sitting there, and everyone knew we were Everton fans. Oh, it was... Um, <laughs> It was funny. There's no character building like growing up an Evertonian. That's what I tell everyone. There's no character <laughs> building. I'm a better character than the non-Evertonians for being an Evertonian. You go through the ringer. We're going through it again this season. I thought last season, I was having I was having sleepless nights in, in April and May last season, thinking, like, if we go down, what will happen? And I thought, never again. Here we are again. Are you confident that we'll get out of it this year? I am confident because I've got Daisy. Um, I'm... I can see the squad turning around. I'm positive about it. You know, we've just sold Gordon for 50 mil to Newcastle. Where's that 50 million gone? Mm. What's, what's going on in it? I'm positive about the squad. Obviously, Everton followed me on social media the other day. I am really positive. I am. Look at the football we play at segments are part of the game. It's just that last finishing touch. Like, all right, let's go back to the game the other day. We got beat 2-0 at home by Aston Villa. I was there in the top balcony. Once again, done a match day vlog on it. And it was sad to watch, rewatch because it got beat. But look at the football we played to create the chances we had. Yeah. McNeil could have took it on his right foot. He never he went to left. They're just little things that Sean Dyche will slowly start to pull and hammer down on in training. Hmm. Look at the football we're playing. We played them off. The, I I personally think we played them off the park. I really do. But we just never had that number nine. No, no, no disrespect to Moape. Yeah. But we just never had that finishing number nine. That, Every time we don't have Dominic Calvert-Lewin, we get the ball in the box. We smash it in that box harder than ever. Every time we've got him, we try and play footy. I know. It, it's like, it's that fine line of, what are we doing? Why? why? McNeil whipped that ball in so many times against Villa, but who to? Who's there? I will be not, not Edderin. He'll, he'll top right it, but he's not Edderin. Moape, he'll try and get his Edderin on it, but against Tyrone Mings, who's winning that? Yeah. It's it's common sense, like we need a number nine and hopefully he's back from injury very soon and I It's imperative I, we get him back, you know, it's so important we get him back. Now I'm I'm not I'm not as big as fan in relation to I don't think he he'd score the amount of goals people hope, but I think our our play changes with him. But do you know if we played the way we did against Villa and had him up front, I think it's a completely different game. Yeah. Every ball in the box, getting your head on, every ball just diving at it. I think it's a completely different game. Do you know what I don't like? And I might get some stick for this. Just how criticising we are on our team. Mm. I just I just don't agree with it. I think I understand the frustration and it's a fine line. But like the players, we need to be behind them. No matter the mistake they do, no matter what they do. We need to be behind them every step of the way. Because they're going out the next week on that pitch. They're not, oh, I've just been shouted at on Instagram and my comments are filled with get out my club. I'm not yeah. playing this week. They're still playing. Wait till transfer week if you want to get them out. You know, give the, like support, support, and just love them. Love them until they are not a part of this club. Because no matter yeah. what, they're playing the next four fixtures. They're playing the next hot 38 fixtures. So we've got to support them every game, no matter the result. That game's gone now. You can't go back with it. Next game, Arsenal away. Let's get behind them. Let's let's yeah. smash. Let's smash it. Let's go to the Arsenal rock them. And I know all the Everton away fans do because I know some of them and they support like it's it's the life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think it's important. If you look on Saturday at, at full time, you know what was important to me? They got clapped off. The way the way this element of like everyone was gutted, obviously, and you leave the ground and you start worrying about things again. But you couldn't blame the players for what was, what was happening on Saturday. They were plugging away and plugging away, little movements, set pieces. They were doing everything that exactly. if we had to strike it, would have resulted in a goal. This is what I'm saying, and it's no offense to Moape because one day I'll do a YouTube video with him where we're scoring top ends <laughs> and he looks absolutely class. But <laughs> I think, me personally, he plays better with a number nine and he's playing off him. That's my personal opinion. I think Moape is better running off the ball or false nine into the midfield, one, two, and the number nine just holding it up and Moape strikes. Moape up top on his own doesn't work in my eyes. 
No, I agree with you. And just and you're going back to the, 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 pos, the positive message and, and trying to get behind this team. I think a lot of fans did that last season, didn't they? I think there's an element of we're probably going to have to do it again. Those coach welcomes and those banners. I don't know where the banners have gone. Actually, I don't know whether it's something to do with the club or this is what this is what makes me like why why is that when we're struggling? Why isn't that every week? And mm. I'm not saying it's not, but why aren't we like why aren't we just behind the team as a standard? Correct me if I'm wrong here, but then banners every game. Yeah, I think when when they talked about the cult, those groups who do that, I think when they spoke about because we done it for the first game of the season against Chelsea, didn't we? And I, I, I'm pretty sure they put like this sort of poll out saying, "Shall we do this every week, or will it just become oh, warm?" Man. They didn't want, they didn't want to get to a situation where the players really needed it and it was just normal. You know what I mean? I think oh, it was that that. Makes sense. That, that's perfect. That's a perfect explanation. So they don't want to get it like every week it's the same so the players don't even get feels from it like when yeah. we do banners out no that's totally that makes sense it's gotta come back now though for me you know gotta come back now that the whole that whole end of last season even even when we were still in the relegation zone i was going to goodison and i was buzzing because of what the atmosphere how many games you got left like 10 12 games yeah i think that half of those are at goodison and, and we've got a, we've got a few hard games games where you're probably the outsiders will look and say Everton won't get points there. So what better place for Goodison to be rocking than in one of those games? But who cares about the outside opinion when all you need is them fans rocking and Everton playing one touch football? Like That's we it. look at looking against Arsenal. One nil, top of the league. No one expects yeah. that. Dice comes in, one nil, beautiful. Everyone's rocking, going the going the boozer after the game, enjoying themselves, smiling. We want that every week. So let's yeah. bring that energy to the next fixture. And I know it's hard. It is hard, especially when people have got problems against the board and people have got problems against players. It is hard, but for the greater good, just let's send all the positive energy we can. Yeah, put it to one side until until someone can do something about these situations because no one can do nothing right now about some of the no, stuff that. You know. No one. Like these these protests. I don't know. I don't know the end goal of it. Is it to get the board sacked? Like. Like, what, I think it's I better, isn't it? They want it's, so, so the message is better. It's, it's just that, stop getting in, stop getting in these situations. We want better. I haven't looked into them, and I don't. I, what do you think of them? I can understand how frustrated people are because it's like, you, you, well. but there was only there was only so many sellable assets in that team, and they sold the most sellable last year, and were worse for it. If you sell your if you're, if you're clever or you've got a well run club. When you sell these players, there's a plan to, to at least remain the same and bring two in. We seem to just go and get domestic players for whatever reason who aren't good enough than the ones with souls. And I, I just think the tipping point now is like we're eventually if you keep doing that, we're eventually gonna go down. What about yeah, selling Rich Allison, not replacing, selling Gordon, not replacing? Yeah. Doesn't add does it? It really doesn't add up. Hey, what about the Marty Gray on the bench? Do you know what? I don't know whether it's a, pers- a personality thing because all these things he's banned. If, if you look at like the snoods and the caps and the, the headphones on match day, these are all the stuff that Amari Gray does. So I'm, I'm, I'm not so sure whether he's sort of sending a message or there's been some sort of resistance from Gray to something. But I'm, he's our, if anyone's going to score the goals to keep us up, it's going to be him. So we've got to get him back on the pitch somehow. Do you think on this starting 11 in goal, Jordan Pickford, right back Patterson, but Coleman yeah. for when he's good? Two centre halves, Cody, Mike Wazowski. Left back, Michalenko. You've got your left mid, McNeil. Or right mid, McNeil and Damari Gray on the left. In the middle, it's rather in front of the back four, Adrisa Garner Gay or Onana. Either one of them. Then you've got Decore and Awobi in the midfield. You've got your two. You've got your two dogs chasing down everything. You've got a wall boot who can actually calm down, bit of skill, bit of calm on the ball, and pass it. Because the thing is, with our midfield now, they all play the same role. They're all defensive minded. Yeah. All three of them are defensive minded. Onan is a brilliant defensive midfielder. CDM. Adisa Ganagay is brilliant. Decore, he chases down, but he's on his own. Hmm. Now, if we had Onan, see, I say Onan or. Even if you put Onana midfield with a Wobi, and I don't know, it's hard to take one of them out because the so you'd never take Ganagay out the team because he's unbelievable. But he's 33, 34. I don't know, it's hard. 
But I just think a Wobie deserves to be in that midfield. Bring Damari Gray on the right and Dominic Calvert-Lewin up top. He'll change it eventually because if you if you stay in the zone, if you stay in a zone or you stay around the zone, you're gonna to have to throw shit at the wall eventually because you, because you can't risk other teams picking up points. Those last two wins we got, everyone else sods law around us won. So th- thank God we did win because we would have been cast aside. But I can I can see eventually I'm going four four two and just going Sims more play two wingers. Can see can see I can see that breaking four, four, glass. Two. Ah, oh, that would be so like. Oh. What about a four-one-four-one? I, I think I don't think any of our strikers can play isolated. I include Loon in that. I think you've got to get people around them. You don't. Um... I think you can play. You can play like the next level strikers. Like when we had Lukaku, he'd play up there all day because he he bullies defenders and he take every chance that he got. Do you think we're going to keep Lewin or do you think we're going to sell him? Do you know, do you know what? This, this this will get some controversy. I think the club will look to somehow either renegotiate terms with him and, and put him on some sort of page of play to protect themselves or they'll look to get rid of him. I don't, I don't think Everton can go in. Now, touch woods, we're all right this season. I don't think you can go into next season thinking that when Lewin's fit, you'll be all right, because we've been caught, we got caught out last season, we had to play Rond on all season, didn't we, or, or half a season, we're getting, <laughs> caught, out. We're getting caught out again now. <laughs> Rond was that team, it was that funny, um, what about the Coventry striker that we're meant to be going for? Yeah, Gikores, he's, he's meant to be out of contract in a year, so so they might take some money for him, that's a gamble, I'd, I'd have took that gamble in January. We had to, we, we, we didn't replace Gordon, and I know we've, I don't know. You look at the bench. Are you confident? Look, I'll be honest with you. I'm not overly confident. That will be all right. I'm not. And this is why. I, this is why I need you on here to fucking spread some positivity on our channel because our listeners and viewers are looking at me every week, and I'm, I'm worried sick. I am. I look at it, and, and I think. I think when everyone's fit, I think it's a team. It's a squad that that's the bottom half of the table. Squad of the league anyway, and our injuries and having. Lampard, who just seemed to, he, at the end, he was a deer in the headlights. He didn't know what he was doing at the end. He, he looked terrified. Did you see the video of the fans meeting him at West Ham? He looked terrified. He, he was in the deep end. He was in the deep oh. end. Oh, that is a, a recipe for chaos. Uh, and event, eventually, it, you get caught. It's different to um, Chelsea, isn't it? It's a completely different scenario. You have yeah. one end of the table with Chelsea, and then you have the other end of the table with Everton. Crazy. You know what, though? Have you seen the seconds? So, like, the seconds have started from the bottom, and they're yeah. slowly just going up. So like he's just sat con- oh, contact Dave's gone, hasn't he? Contact Dave's gone, he's gone to Man United, yeah. He's um so I- contact Dave's gone, Marcel Brown's gone. Um yeah. they've sacked the manager, they've got Dyson. They've sold our best players. Is it all next? It's like a plank. <laughs> Imagine Machine he came out and he was like, You've been pranked. <laughs> Have you seen that meme of Anton Deck? And the press on the button. It, 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 there's a meme. I'll, I'll send it to you later. There's a meme that and deck on the, on the um, Saturday takeover where they're in someone's ear telling them what to do, and it's about oh. machinery, and they go like, "Now sell Gordon." Oh. <laughs> I'll, start, I'll have to send it. Look, we need. We need. I think you're right, Ryan. We need positivity in the fan base. Um, I'm and not there's no one there either. I'm not criticizing our oh, fan, no, base. No. Our fan base. It's there. It is there. But I can see the. Fr- it's hard to say positivity because I can see the frustration. Once again, people are working all week to come and spend on coach travel, ticket, you know, enjoying a little pint with the friends. They look forward to that every week. And then to get that result of a performance, I can understand that frustration. I understand. Yeah, I'm there. I'm there. I'm I'm as frustrated as most people coming over. I'm, I'm sure you are as well. I can see it and I can feel it. But it's not going to help anymore if we are negative towards the team. It's just going to make us worse and worse and worse. Yeah, big couple of away games coming up this week and then we've also got, I think we've got Brentford at home. Uh, so going into March, there's, there's, a, there's a chance there for the, for the away ends to not only bounce if you get, get the flags in there. Uh, no, no. No. <laughs> so, uh, just... I get that like, when I speak about it because Arsenal away, it's a typical away day, top of the table. But they're playing unbelievable football. They haven't even got Jesus yet back, and like they're just they're just walloping teams. But we've done it at home, so why can't we do it away? I know. 
I know it's 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 one of those, and it that they had they had Goodison with them that day. We're talking here about the fans and the atmosphere. Goodison was so far with those players that day. They've got Goodison with them every day when they wear that badge. They've got Goodison with them. It's just the mentality of the team. The team just need to see this clip go out there and just picture Goodison. Just forget about the whole Arsenal stadium. And I know it's probably harder to say when you've got them shouting mad stuff yeah. at you, whatever's going on in the chance. But at the end of the day, it's them eleven players that go on the pitch. Are you, are you going to be doing more Everton related content? I'd love to do more Everton related content. I'd love to get in touch with Everton and pursue that because I want to create the attitude of the fan base through my socials to the club and spread that positivity. And you know what I mean? I want to I want to create that for the team. I want to show what the team's about. I want to go behind the scenes and show what the team and how they're feeling and actually show the fan base what the what what the team are right now doing and how yeah. they feel. Do you know what? There's a window there, you know, you're talking there, I've heard you on different podcasts where you've said like there's markets and there's window, there's opportunity. There's opportunity there for someone like you, I think, to come in and, and, and do what you're saying you want to do with Everton, you know what I mean? To have this positive impact. I'm sitting there and I've got my little five-year-old lads on my knee and I'm watching you dance and dance and dance and he's laughing and I'm laughing and that's me and him are Evertonians, but what you've done there is you've not touched our, you've not touched the Everton part of us. If you could somehow turn it into... It's Everton related and so positive. I, I think it's smashing. I've got so many things in my mind that could Everton relate and turn the fan base and watch some positive content, you know, yeah. betray that through my socials because I'm already doing it in other areas, just like I did with my Twitch platform. I was doing it in other areas and now I'm growing. It's just up to Everton if they want to do it with me. I can't I can't just roll into the changes without Everton saying okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be a vlog. That would be a vlog. <laughs> How are we, Seamus? Hey, that goal was good, Broski. But already, I could sense the people seeing me with Everton or going the Finch Fat or Finch, going the training ground or going the new ground and just getting that. It, uh, the way I, the way I want to put it is getting the feel of the squad through my socials because I, I don't. It's not believe me more, but it's more of oh, he's a scouser. He wouldn't lie to us. He wouldn't lie mm -hmm. that if Everton are feeling bad, they're feeling bad. He wouldn't put it and manipulate and lie on his socials because I wouldn't. Yeah. I want to go in there and actually see how the players are. Are they feeling happy? Are they feeling confident? Because then when you see that on my socials, you go the game going, I seen Ryan's video. They're feeling for it today. They're feeling up for it. No. Oh, Everton put a video up, but I don't know if I believe it because they're going to say they're good. You know, you know there's, there's a mix and match. I know exactly what you mean. Exactly for for, for, an Ever, for an Evertonian and a positive Evertonian to be doing different content around the club and releasing a message that way, opposed to an article in the program saying we'll be silent that someone's ghost. Exactly, exactly. It's 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 a non-formal approach. It's our rock in there, short, hoodie, comfy, with me flip flops on, and I'll just be one of the lads with them for the day, or I'll go and do a football video with them, and I'll portray the message and actually see how they're feeling and how yeah. they're feeling towards the next game. And then that'll hopefully give the fans a better message of, I like this, they're up for it, now I'm up for it. I'm smiling, I'm getting giddy and work because I'm thinking, we've got Arsenal away, we're bottom of the league, but I don't care. I've seen Ryan's video, that Seamus Coleman's up for it, he does everything for the badge. Already speaking about it, I'm getting goosebumps because it's like, that's what you want. You yeah. want to see videos, you don't want to see this formal video that okay this yeah yeah we've got it today guys no you want to see actual real and i'm not saying everton i'm producing real but i think it'd be portrayed good through me no i, I agree look anyone listening on the on the audio podcast on youtube we've got the the link to, to uh, ryan's twitter if you're on the audio podcast um open your twitter app when you finish your jog or you've parked up and um, it, it's still ryan but instead of the i and still it's a number one so st one ll and Ryan, um, get over to Twitter, give him a follow, and on there you'll be able to see his link tree, links to all the socials, his TikToks, his Instagram, the brilliance. If you've yet to discover him, go over there, but make sure that you've got about three hours spare because you'll be stuck in that hole of just watching some great content. Ryan, I'm not going to keep you too much longer because I know you've got stuff to do. A few more questions. Was the one video or was the one social media moment that you done and you thought that that's the one? That's my next level one. Um, in terms of next level, what do you mean? Like the next well, level? You thought, this, is going, this is going to get the hits. This this is the one. This is the content. I get a feel about content all the time. I've just put a video out less than a day ago. 
and it's blown up. Everyone loves yeah. it. I get a feel about any video that I'm involved in because I believe in what I'm doing. And of course, my whole thing is the intention of leaving the biggest impact on anyone that reaches or watches my my content. That's what I want to do. I want to leave that happy, pure laughter impact on anyone. That's my purpose. I've, I'm aligned with my purpose. I, I know that, Ian. I come on and create content to make people laugh. So I pursue that every day. Even if I got 10,000 views, 1,000 views, 10 million views, no matter what, that might make one person laugh. I've done my job. My job's making someone laugh in a dark day or a glimmer of light in that day. It's making them laugh and giddy you with your son. That probably brings you and your son closer without going personal. That probably brings you and your son closer in that glimmer second of a moment where you're watching my content and you both find it funny. You know, your dad, your son's like, Dad, Dad, look at this. And you're like, oh, boss. It doesn't then, even, it doesn't even relate. And you know what? It's boss because I'm into old school dance music i think you are as well so i'm, I'm always putting her on the car and he's nodding away and then we see and you've linked that together with me and him and he's laughing his head off now he's doing the dancing and stuff and now just... loves old school dancing now son like dad he's listening to better off alone like that nodding your head <laughs> <laughs> bit of alice dj yeah <laughs> brilliant but that's that's my intention and <clears throat> thankfully for the team around me i've aligned with my purpose a lot sooner i knew it but there was a bit of brain fog and now i'm dot on it I know every day what my task is. I know my end goals. I know what, what I've got to do. There's enough misery out there for someone else to be adding to it. It is amazing what you're doing. If you have that mindset where you're waking up and you're thinking, how can I make someone smile on my platform? Unbelievable. You've, half the job is done there by you just waking up and wanting to do that. Every day I wake up, I've got a morning routine, I smash it out, I exercise, I look after myself because there's one thing that my mentor, mentor teaches me. And he's like, for everyone to feed off you with laughter and smiles, Ryan, You've got to be the best best version of yourself. And that's what I'm going through now. I'm going through that process of becoming the best version of myself, saying the affirmations <clears throat> the right way, watching how I speak, the words that come out of my mouth mean a lot, everything I write down, journaling, exercising, mentally and physically fit. All them things matter if I'm going to let millions, billions of people feed off me for laughter, enjoyment, excitement. You've, you've talked there about one of your goals in relation to, to Everton. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, a couple of people at the club do watch this. So, again, if, if you are over there watching this, you know, get in contact with me or get in contact with, with Ryan because I, I do think that would be a fantastic bit of bit of content. But away from goals, what's next? What's, act, what's actually coming up next? What are you doing? Now? Just in the next... What's no, your plan for the next? Yeah, so, so have you got in your brain now what, what's content like, you, you want to do? Or? What's next for me is now, like time is now. I'll plan for the next days coming up. So I've got videos coming up with, you know, some big some big scouts people. I'll put it that way without dropping any okay. names. Um, I think I might have a video today with the big Evertonian. That video will be out very soon. I've got a video coming out with a professional football team, which I'll probably release wednesday or thursday match day vlogs i do as many as i can which are affordable because it's not cheap going away and following the team everywhere um what's next is just keep pushing the more bigger the platform we get the bigger the impact we have we're nearly a 500k on tiktok we're nearly a 40k on instagram we're nearly a 5k on twitter just the bigger we get the more the more uh, it's like it's so powerful in what I'm doing. It's It means a lot to me. It's like the impact we're going to have. I know how and what we're going to impact. So it's already cemented in my brain. It's just turning into a physical reality. So what's next is just keep going. And just the last question on you and, and what you're doing. How important is the um, how the Still Gang is growing? The Still Gang's amazing. It's my family. I've got the merch on here. You know, we opened it this year and the merch absolutely kicked off. We <laughs> got me cap here. Um, I love them. They're my family. I've said it from day one. Anyone's welcome in the Still Gang. Even if you send me hate, anyone's welcome. Because I was that person who sent hate one day. You know, everyone has the bad days where they feel terrible. And they, I don't know, send a bit of shut up or send a nasty text message or whatever it is. I've still opened my arms to you. I see them. I see them as my family. I've I've had my bad days. I've had my good days with them, and when we hit achievable class goals, we celebrate together. When we're having a down day, and we want to watch Netflix together. We watch Netflix together. 
we do everything together like through all my socials i'll answer as many instagram dms as i can because at the end of the day Ian, it's a people world me and you are people at the end of the day out of all this stuff around us that are that's man-made by the person next to us it's a people world and how you feel and how high how i feel affects both of us in this conversation and that that's it boss way to end the podcast it's been great to talk about to get to know you a little bit i've been watching you from afar and it looks a bit weird sometimes when i'm watching a 20 year old lad on the bus but you know it is what it is, it is, what it is. you've been entertaining and maybe little boy is loving it if anyone is watching it and they're not quite sure of of who you are the twitter is at the bottom follow ryan over at still ryan it's st1 ll ryan and his link tree is on there so you can go and subscribe to his youtube his instagram get the merchandise twitter and tiktok it's all over there on there ryan it's been a pleasure my friend thank you so much for coming on and you heard it first when he's a millionaire he's going to come back and buy across the park podcast and make him retire <laughs> thank you Ian. i appreciate you for having me on legend cheers mate